It's been a very eventful week filled with emotions. In just five days, we moved from remembering the life and legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. to the inauguration of the 45th president of our country. There have been a plethora of activities surrounding both those momentous days. Somewhere in the midst of our observances of the civil rights movement and the changing of the guard in Washington, our lives continue to unfold. <coughs> we woke up, we got up, and we went about our business. We continued to do the things we do every week, even if we had filled our schedules with multiple additional activities. Because regardless of what's happening around us, life continues. We see that in our reading today. Jesus lived in a politically volatile time in a politically volatile location. When he learned that John the Baptist had been taken prisoner, political prisoner, Jesus continued his life. He made adjustments, but he continued. He allowed his public ministry to take a detour so he could continue that crucial work. John's arrest was a very powerful signal of the level of fear the message to reform their society was causing in the people in positions of privilege. Jesus could have stayed where he was, in and around Jerusalem, but that would probably have resulted in his arrest following very closely on the arrest of John. Herod was in a precarious position. His power was dependent upon his ability to maintain the status quo, to continue the oppressive policies and practices that kept the average person struggling to get by, while those at the top of the food chain, the top one to three percent of that society, enjoys lives of luxury and excess. <coughs> John and Jesus both brought a different vision for the world. They called for change. They called for life as God intended it. They called people to bring the vision of the ki peaceable kingdom into view. John's voice was silenced by his arrest and his execution. <clears throat> Jesus made a tactical move, a detour, in order to continue building momentum in the movement to bring people back to faithful living, back to the principles of their own scripture, back to living lives of love that bears the fruit of justice, kindness, and true peace. His changed location of his ministry did not change the message of his ministry. It allowed him to continue to reach out to people. It allowed him to live longer so more people could be inspired by his teachings. He adjusted his location but stayed on his life journey. Same path different street. Sometimes we need to be willing to accept changes in our plans too. We have to listen for the still speaking voice of God. Interruptions aren't always roadblocks or dead ends. Sometimes they're just guiding us to another route to accomplish our same goals. As followers of Christ, it isn't always easy to know how to be light, how to share God's love with others. Sometimes we find a comfortable niche and we're able to go about life being a living witness quite simply, just by living our values. Sometimes we're called out of our comfort zone onto a different path. But even then, even when our detour is filled with uncertainty and stress, it is still our life journey and still our opportunity to be a living witness by living our values. Jesus didn't give up when Jerusalem became too volatile for him to continue his ministry there. He relocated, <clears throat> built a strong following, encouraged lots of people, taught the truth of God's love, healed people, called the disciples, built a structure in his ministry that would allow the disciples to continue to work without him, and eventually returned to the hot seat of Jerusalem. Today, we don't know what the future will bring. We know we're in the middle of change in our government. It's too, too soon to know if that change will be for the better, the worse, or a mixed bag of good and bad change. 
In this time of uncertainty, we can still cling to our truths, and we can look to the life of Jesus for reassurance. We can accept the disruptions, detours, delays, and disappointments because we're focused on the bigger picture of living each day in faith, striving to do a better job personally of emulating Christ in our actions and in our thoughts. Our citizenship is not only U.S., it's also a citizenship to the kingdom of God. Regardless of our political leaders, regardless of the decisions they make, we can live knowing God is the ultimate authority in our lives. And God will always offer us hope, peace, love, and grace. We can live in confidence because our highest authority, our God, is with us. It couldn't have been easy for John to be John the Baptist. It couldn't have been easy for Jesus to be Jesus or the sons of Zebedee to walk away from the life they knew into an uncertain discipleship following an unfamiliar path, preaching change into what must have appeared to be a hopeless and impossible structure of oppression. But in, sight of the, in spite of the difficulties, in spite of the uncertainties, in spite of the fears, they followed their own life's journeys, detours and all. Knowing that God was with them every step of the way, knowing that God is with us every step of the way, we too can live our lives faithfully, even in times of uncertainty and change. We can continue to be light and love, regardless of our circumstances, and regardless of what is happening in Lansing, in Washington, D.C., or in our own city hall. This Tuesday, the Jackson City Council will include a non-discrimination ordinance on their agenda. We in Albion were able to get an NDO passed without any opposition. Jackson has struggled with the idea of an NDO for 15 to 20 years. Getting the council to even talk about it has been tough. People who supported the ordinance have faced lots of delays and disappointments over the years. But even when the mayor and the council have been absolutely closed to the possibility of even discussing the idea, even when the plan to get an equal rights ordinance passed was on such a big detour that it wasn't even allowed in the city hall, there's been a persistent vision that someday, someday, all the people of Jackson would be treated equally and all would have equal protection under the law. Finally, after detours and delays, and more delays and more detours, the topic will be officially on the agenda this week. Many of the people who began this work so many years ago are gone now. Some have died, some have moved to different communities, Still others succumbed to disappointment and have given up the struggle. But the work has continued. The message was shared in other locations, in business meetings, in neighborhoods, in churches, building support. Being on the agenda isn't the end of the struggle, but it is a major vi victory. Maybe this will be the time when those in positions of power in Jackson see the need and support the idea of equal protection for all people. Maybe the time still hasn't come. Either way, we're called to be light and love. Because just like the civil rights movement of the 1960s and the women's rights movement of the 1970s, it takes more than laws to change the world. It takes people living the vision. It takes people stepping out in faith bringing the kingdom of God into view by being light and love. May we all be willing to be light, even in uncertain times and unfamiliar circumstances. Disappointments, delays, and detours are inevitable, but they don't have to cause us to abandon hope. Together, as followers of Christ, we can change the world. Together, we can dismantle the walls that divide us ending all the evils of discrimination of all kinds. Together we can end poverty. Together we can make sure that all babies born in this world have clean water, shelter, nutrition, health care, education, and opportunity. 
Together, we can love our neighbors as ourselves and bring healing. Let us live our values, trusting God to guide our paths regardless of our circumstances. Amen.